Hey, hello and welcome again uh, to our continued series for Mastering RMM. So yesterday we talked about intelligent alerts and uh, all about monitoring. So let's continue that particular use case and talk about uh, custom monitors today. So let's get started with uh, our uh, discussion today for our custom monitors and the different use cases around that. So as you see, uh, we provide intelligent alerts. The intelligent alerts are practically the predefined monitoring solutions that are offered in the system today. And with those intelligent alerts, we want to provide a customization to monitor uh, any kind of data that's being collected from the endpoint. So when the data is being collected by the RMM agent, we also try to present and make available those monitors where you can say when this happens or when this thing changes, we want to get uh, started with that. So uh, let's see. So from a navigation standpoint, the monitor section is on the left navigation under the alert management called monitors. And under monitors, you will see different kind of monitors which you have created here. Now, when you create the monitors, it basically requires key input values, uh, but you could technically apply that to any endpoint. So you could say, apply this to all the endpoints, do it for a specific company, for a specific site or device group, or even you can restrict it down and say, uh, like, I want to apply uh, certain endpoints only. So you may be able to go ahead and pick and choose specific machines where you want to do that. Now, with the whole suite of different monitors, uh, we offer monitors for Windows machines, Macs, Linux, and ESXi devices. So basically, we cover everything uh, that we offer today uh, from a monitoring standpoint. Now, there's a huge list of all the different kind of monitors monitors that are made available. And each of these monitors come with a very serious and those values would allow you to go ahead and set specific monitors. So here's a whole list of items right from services, process, events, CPU, disk, memory. So by and large, I would say anything that we collect from the endpoint, we make it available for you to go ahead and write, an, uh, write a monitor on top of it. All right. And now let's talk about creating monitors. Now, different monitors have a different use case. And for that, we have those predefined templates in the in, in place here. So uh, if I talk about a service monitor, the system only requires the key input, which is the service name. And again, we provide you a list of the distinct monitoring services across all the endpoints that are monitored. So it's easy, you don't need to chase or you don't need to find those information as well. I could write a disk monitor that only key inputs in with the value. Would you want to monitor that by percentages, specific values? We have an event monitor, which is which goes from basic to complex, where you can provide specific event IDs to further narrow it down by looking at other values like provider names and severity and specific keywords that you would like to apply there. But the whole design part of our monitors is pretty simple that you just need to know what you're trying to monitor. You don't need to get into technical complexities in terms of writing complex codes uh, and writing scripts and things like that. There is a whole uh, different uh, configuration uh, with respect to keying values versus writing complex code. So we are trying to make it so simple that anybody should be able to write monitors. Now, again, it further expands into some more of the complex ones where you can see here that uh, there is a PowerShell script uh, that you could run on the machine and look for the output that has been received from the machine. Uh, and based on that particular value, if it matches criteria, it will generate alerts. So these are the different kind of monitors. But more importantly, I wanted to really get into the, the part of using different kind of monitors for different use cases here. So I'm going to quickly jump in to our uh, demo here. I'm just going to pull my, my instance here. And here, uh, I'll show again. So alert management monitors is the screen where you should be able to see uh, all the created monitors here. Here, I've, I've created a bunch of these monitors out here. But on the right-hand side, there is a button that says Create Monitor. And Create Monitor is basically split into two parts. 
on the left-hand side is the basic information that you would like to uh, you know, set in the system for creating monitors. Remember, the name is the name of the ticket uh, which would be populated. So if I, if I write uh, test application monitor, uh, then when this monitor is going to get created, you're going to see this as a part of the ticket. The description is a, a area where you could just include information that your technicians can understand why this monitor got triggered and what are their next course of action because we include the description in the ticket body itself so it's easier for you and here is a list of all the different monitors that we have and for today just for starters we'll start with the basic but we'll go towards the more complex version of it and for that we have a complex monitor sitting here but let's start with the basic the most common use case that we get from partners is, I want to generate a ticket whenever a specific application is missing on my machine. The easiest answer to that is just click on the application monitor and on the right hand side, you see we, we kind of give you a form, a very basic form. It just asks you certain things like, what do you want to monitor if an application is installed or an application is not installed? Uh, and how does the name uh, look like? Like, do you want to go for an exact match or you want to go for a like match, which is contained out here? And here, I might just uh, give the name of application. Like, a, for example, I'm just going to say Google Chrome. Great. A monitor is almost uh, ready from creation part. And when I'm going to mark it as ticket resolution, I'm going to say, when Google Chrome is installed, that's it. I don't need to write a single line of code. I just need to type in the name of the application. And here, when I click on the select target, I just basically get a target selector where you want to apply the monitor. So based on the criteria or the level that you apply, let's say company applies to all the endpoints. I go for sites, it applies to all the endpoints at that site. Device group, you could make any complex uh, queries in terms of isolating those devices where this needs to be applied. Device group comes in handy. If you know specific machines where you want to do it, you can go for devices or in case, because I want Google Chrome to be available on every endpoint, I'll just go for all resources. But again, this is your choice in terms of how you want to start with. General recommendation, start with a endpoint where you want to test it out, make sure that it's, it's working as expected, and then expand the, the target resources to cover a large number of endpoints. With this, you can also write automation on top of it. So let's say if I wrote down uh, uh, a script that allows you to deploy Google Chrome on your machine, I will just click on Add Automation. I'll find my specific script, what I need to do, and select it. And when I hit the Save button, the monitor gets created, and it starts monitoring immediately, which is near real time. We start monitoring those endpoints, and, and as soon as the data is being sent from the endpoint, we'll generate an alert. But let's say I don't want to do application. The next common thing that we get from partners uh, is, it, what if I want to uh, monitor specific events? Now, just change the type over here on the right-hand side. The form changes, and we again ask you a very basic question. What event log do you want to monitor? Application, security, or you want to give something customized? And when you give me a customized one, we'll start monitoring this customized log for that. For reason, I'll just go for application. If a vendor or somebody told you that this is an event which you should be monitoring for specific issues or something, and if I say event ID 1001 is the one that needs to be triggering an alert, great, you are good to go ahead and create this particular monitor. But if you want to further narrow down, because 1001 is a very common event ID that might be used by other applications and other solutions, you might want to further narrow it down by picking what type of severity do you want to go for and give sources. So there is a source information and the custom thing will come into picture and you are further narrowing down the results. You might also want to go for the event description and you can say if this event uh, keywords available uh, only then shoot the alert. Uh, that's when you get the ticket. You can also have a ticket resolution that tells you when and what you're supposed to look at it to consider the issues that's been resolved. Let's go a little more complex here, right? I, I might just go for VMware, right? Uh, it's not easy to monitor VMware, but I just need to know what you're trying to do. So here, we give you more options. We, we ask you questions through the form. 
what do you want to monitor? Do you want to monitor a host or you want to monitor a VM? If you say host, then the next question is, is there a state monitoring? And it's, it will us uh, an option whether it's running or not running. But let's go for our guest monitoring uh, machines here. And within the guest, you can see the state, uh, number of snapshots, size of the snapshot. You can define the size of the snapshot, and you will get an alert as soon as we receive that particular data. You could further go complex with scripts. And with the script, you could define how you want to trigger that script on the machine. You could say, run every, let's say, 10 minutes. And you could put a PowerShell script here. You'll run that script every 10 minutes, look for specific keywords. If a keywords match, we'll generate an alert. If it doesn't match, we'll continue monitoring and running it every 10 minutes. But if you want to run that script on an event trigger, so if an event occurs, then you want to run the script, and then you want to monitor the script output, even we provide that option. What if I further want to make it complex? So we just made a specific monitor called as a complex monitor here. And with the complex monitor, we just want to know what all things you want to add in the solution. So if I say application, I get the form. I'll say Google Chrome for a reason. And I'll say I want to see when it's not installed. I can add an inner block and say, and the CPU of my machine should be more than 80% for, let's say, 25 minutes. I can add further inner blocks and say, and um, let's say disk space, right? And the disk space is below 10%. Now, when I do this, what am I doing is I'm just basically collecting multiple monitors, joining them together to make a more complex version of a monitor. And in this case, instead of you getting three tickets when Google Chrome is not present, when the CPU is high and the disk space is low, instead of all three, when all three meets together, that means the endpoint meets all three criteria, only then you would receive an alert. You might also say an outer block and you could just put an or statement and say when this three combinations meet or another combination that you could create, if that happens, you will get an alert. Now, in the, the use cases around these complex monitors are there's no definite uh, opening and closing. So if you want to see if a specific custom field value is changed, and you want to resolve that particular ticket when a specific application is installed, when you, you try and match two different things, that's when complex monitors are really handy uh, to do those things out here. The same thing goes with your resolution part, as I mentioned. You might say an application, and because I started with Google Chrome, I'm not mandated to go with Google Chrome. I might say Notepad++ is installed. And even if Notepad++ gets installed in the machine, it's going to get resolved, which could be the situations where you want a different browser. You want a Chrome browser or a Firefox browser. One of them gets installed or deployed in the machine, it should get resolved. So here are the different things you could try. But uh, looking at the, the patterns how our partners are using in, uh, majority of the use cases gets fulfilled by our standalone monitors where you know we, we provide a list of items for you. And you can just choose the value fill in the blanks and set the monitor to the target. Monitor gets created and the tickets are starting to flow in the system. As soon as the ticket resolution criteria meets, it'll start closing the tickets as well. Plus it's a full end-to-end -end cycle with your automation as well. So even if you're writing any kind of monitor, uh, you, one thing you'll notice is uh, the automation button is always available. We want to always close the loop by running something on the machine. But again, it's optional don't need to always run an automation, but you can always do it. That's what the majority of our partners do. Uh, something to detect, execute, and close. That's what it happens. If, if you're using PSA or any other ticketing system connected with RMM, these tickets are going to flow in to give you the end-to-end -end results for this. 
And again, uh, we also cover uh, suspensions with that. You can always create and set suspension in case if you want to ignore certain criteria during a specific point of time or uh, you don't want to continue with that, you always can go back. I'm just going to cancel this out. I can always select specific monitors and I can disable it because I no longer need it. My, my intention or to do something is completed. I can disable that always or I can put them to a suspension state. So that should cover anything and everything you've been looking at uh, from monitor standpoint. In case if there are different use cases that you're trying to solve and uh, you need help uh, from ConnectWise, uh, we are available. Uh, here's the documentation for that. And in case if uh, you still need help, uh, feel free to connect with us over our virtual community session. Uh, pretty happy to hear your feedback, uh, your request in terms of what you're looking for. Uh, we'll be there to address and answer those things out here. That's it for today. Thank you. But do join us tomorrow again for our session where we'll cover uh, different questions. If there are items that we can tackle, we'll, we'll tackle those things through our live session, live Q&A. But we'll also go through the full suite of alerting and monitoring actions tomorrow. Thank you. Bravo.